Hi everyone and welcome back to our RTS series. In the previous episode we've got our AI characters walking around, we've got bases in there. We're now going to add a little feature for our bases so with the camera controls. So the idea being is that when we click on a base uh, we'll make the camera snap to that location. As well as uh, you can then tie that with hotkeys later on if you wish to reposition the camera wherever you want. We can set up that functionality to get that working today. Um, and then in the next episode we'll start work on the UI as promised for our faces. So the idea being behind this is that when I'm playing the game, if I were to select on this building, the camera would recenter onto that location rather than being off the center here. This allows us to snap to this and make things a lot easier for the player to find what they're clicking on and what they're searching on, it makes it a lot neater. So I'm just gonna close that. And for this, the way this is gonna work is using the artist controller. So the artist controller has this artist camera reference that we can use to reposition. Now to do that, we need to be able to call this from wherever we have, okay? Now for that to work, we're gonna to have to create some way of communication between uh, any actor to the player character's controller. So the easiest way to do that is we're gonna go into our units and we're going to unit base. So inside our unit base, we're gonna go into a begin play event and in here, we're going to get the player controller and we're gonna cast that to our particular RTS controller. Look that up. And then we're gonna store this as an RTS controller reference. So promote that to a variable. We got as RTS controller. Compile and save. Now because this is an apparent class, it means all the other classes also have it. So I can go into any of these and set that up. Now I don't want to do it for units, I only want to do it for buildings. So if I go to the building base class now, and on the clicked event here, we're going to get our RTS controller. Like so. And that is the reference that we just made in our other class. And from here, we can now change the, the camera and do all sorts of things there as we wish. However, for that, I'm going to make a function in my RTS controller to handle that for me. Let's go over to RTS controller and make that function. So let's go make a event here. And we'll do a custom event. And we're going to have this custom event here to set camera location. And it needs one parameter, and that is going to be the location you want to set it to. Let's change that to a vector and type in location. In the set camera location, we're going to use the move component 2. And the move component 2 is a tool that can be using to move a single component from one location to another or a different rotation over a certain amount of time. That saves it a lot of hassle with dealing with ticks and so forth. Now for this to work, we need to send in a component. So you can't send just the artist camera in, it won't work, for example. That won't plug into that. Because this is a reference to an actor, not a component. So, easy way to do that is go around here and type in root, and you'll get the default scene root. And now you can plug that into the component. Now because it is the root, it means it will affect the whole actor. It's exactly what we want. So now we need to plug in the location. The location is going to come from our event. And the target rotation is going to be its current rotation. Because I don't want it to turn or do anything like that. So I'm going to take the artist camera, get rotation. Uh, for, sorry, from the scene route, get rotation. And get world rotation. And plug that into the target relative rotation. Now on here you can change how long it takes. I'm going to leave it at 0.2. But you can change that and customize that however you wish on your one. Compile and then play test. Oh, sorry, then go back to our building. Almost forgot. So go back to our building base. And after we've got our RTS controller reference, we drag this out and do set camera location. And quite simply, all you do is type in the location here, which is going to be get actor location. Compile and save that. Now, when I push play, I will click on the building. The camera will move and snap to that position. I can move the camera away, that's not a problem. I can hit that and away I go. Now, I want to maybe have a key on my keyboard to help refocus it. So let's say when I hit F on my keyboard, 
it will snap the camera back to that location back to whatever I've got selected so I can go off here hit F and it will snap back to that position so to do that we're going to go to our controller and our controller here we're going to do the F key and I'll make an input for this on my project settings so I'll have it there go to input action mapping and we'll call this one focus camera and this will be the F key on the keyboard so this will work for all our units no matter what we've got selected so I'm going to go into our unit selection here choose get and then from there I'm going to get copy and we get the very first one in this case now this will work for buildings but if you've got loads of units that are scattered over the place and maybe you want to focus on uh, just the first one this is what you do here if you wanted to focus on an average distance between all the units that will be a bit different we'll cover that another time but for now we'll leave it as this so let's put in our focus event focus camera we've got this unit selection here we're going to get the location of that and then we're going to call our set camera location set camera location and plug that in there file and save that let's test that out so if i push play and i select our building camera will snap to it if i move away and hit f camera will snap back to it no matter how far away i go that's a really useful mechanic and allows us to have a bit more control for the player in navigating their world the next part is how we're going to spawn the menu so what we're going to do in this case is we're not going to have it appear at the bottom of the screen because we're using a edge scrolling system so your mouse getting to the bottom of the screen is going to be problematic so what we're going to do is that when you're on here and you're focused on this uh building here we have a little context menu come up here showing what you can do with it so these little big buttons here 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 or on the other side that will showcase what you can do with it in this case it's building buildings so let's create that ui for that so in here in our ui folder we can make a new folder and do this as base building ui and we're gonna have a card system so you have a variety of cards in a row that will be turned on off and on based on your level resources whatever it may be so we're going to create the ui for our card we a widget blueprint and we'll go ui card The card is going to be pretty simple and we get rid of our canvas panel first of all and so we're going to do a size box and on the size box we're going to do width and height override and we're going to change these sizes to match the sort of card size we want so to view this and preview how it's going to look i'm going to change it from field screen to desired change the width override here to 300 and change the height override here to 500 we'll get a sort of card shape I'll make that a bit shorter let's try 400 that's a bit better so that's the size of my card i'm going to have and i'm going to fill that with a border or an image if i had an image i'd put an image in there i'll just put a border in there keep it simple that on this border i'm going to change the color of the brush here to uh, a dark gray that's sort of see-through 0.8 and hit ok on the card here we're going to have a instruction so what it is build whatever so we're going to have a uh, vertical box start our border inside a vertical box i'm going to put in a text field and another text field the first text field is sort of going to be an instruction like build buy upgrade whatever it may be so here i'm going to change this and change the size of that font here from 24 to 18 and on my text block here the second one here i'm going to indent it in with a bit of padding on the left here five maybe a bit higher let's do 10 i right, still 20. there you go and so for example this would have like build barracks uh, and then you, once you've got barracks built you maybe go upgrade barracks or, or or whatever i don't know you can decide what you want to do with this but i'm going to have this set to build so i'm going to type in build for now build 
and this would be the name of the block so i'm gonna put a placeholder in here so i'm gonna do curly, uh, square bracket uh ph uh building and that's our building name placeholder now because it is a placeholder i'm gonna make that a variable so tick is variable and we'll call that one hard title text so with that we're also going to have a thumbnail showing the image that we need to have here so go into image and put that into my work box and we're going to hit fill for this one so it can fill up the available space after we've got the image in we're going to put in a horizontal box and put that after our image and the horizontal box it can have two texts in there now the reason why it's going to have two texts is because we're going to have two resources um, so we know want to know how much each of each resource we need for this so add one text there another text there i'm going to change the values of the size here to let's say 10 and 10. but i'm going to add some padding around all of these so i'm going to go to the horizontal box and add some padding generally i'll do 20 for each one and that would do I'm going to go to my text block here and we'll make it set to fill and set the other one to fill as well and then fill up the available space equally also then going to make this one on the right right aligned so if I go down to the text and change the align text to the right so here we're going to have the resource needed for wood so we're going to go back it here ph underscore wood and this one we're going to have as ph or stone or whatever resources that you want to use i'm just going to keep it simple and have just those two um and these needs to also be variable so i'm going to tick is variable and change the name of them so i'm going to go uh, resource wood text and this would be resource stone text and later on we may put in some images in there like little uh, little icons to indicate that to the player as well we compile and save that okay so there is our thing and we will make a building icon here or image or graphic or our placeholder uh, so we can click on this image here and name this one as uh, thumbnail so and around the whole entire thing on this border here we're going to add some padding around it so go to padding changing to 10 10 uh not padding sorry on that one bad it'd be on the vertical box 10. there we go so we've got a little bit of padding around the edges of the whole entire but then i also want my card to have padding between each card so to do that you go to the root the ui card root here and we go to padding over here and do some padding on the left and the right of 10 units and that will space out each card as we play them file and save that and that'll do for now we'll close that and alongside that we'll also need the horizontal box that is going to be scrollable to showcase the different things you can build with it so we're going to go into use interface and we'll call this one base menu why? and we're going to design this to be uh, leave it as canvas panel and in here we're going to have our scroll box and put that in there and the scroll box we're going to position where we want it to be so if we are looking at the building uh we want the box maybe to be here but no you design where you want it to be I'm going to anchor it here so i'm going to go to anchors and go to bottom left because it's closest where it is there and that'll do and in that scroll box i'm going to add my cards in there just to test it out i can see what they look like so i drag my ui card in so and you can see where they are quite large we'll probably change that quite a bit so let's go to the scroll box and tick size to content and so i'm going to add another one and another one at the moment you see it's scrolling wasn't uh, vertically we need to change that so go to scroll box 
and we're going to go to the scroll orientation and change that to horizontal. So, and then we want to change the size of this thing. So at the moment I've got it sized to content, which is fine, but I need it to be cut off at some point. So I'm going to leave it like this and just take size to content and turn that off. I'm making note before I do so of the size and X and the Y. So if I change the X and Y, sorry, the Y, sorry, keep that the same as the 174 roughly, and then change the X so it cuts it off slightly. So tick, untick that. And we're going to change the size here. Oh, sorry, that didn't work, so let's just tweak that. We get our size. I think we had 400 before, didn't we, in the thing? So we've got 400. And then in the size in the X here, we'll change that to, I think I've got 300 either way. So if I change that to, uh 600 no sorry uh, 700 you should see a bit of overlap which is what you want because you want to indicate to the player hey there's more here to see just scroll along and you can see it we hit compile there and save that also you can design a lot about your scroll bar like the scroll bar itself the image that you're using for it as well as thickness and so on and so forth or if you actually want a scroll bar at all you can make it so it's invisible and you just scroll all around so we hit save on that and close that down so let's get it so it appears on the screen without being in interactable or edits any information in it we'll just get it so it appears in the shot so when we go to select our building here we're going to uh, after we set camera location we're going to create a widget and we're going to set the class and choose base menu ui then i take the return value for this Promote that to a variable. We we'll call this one base menu. And then we're going to add that to our viewport. File and save that. Let's test out what that looks like. Play. Scroll down. Here. And there's my building. I can use my scroll wheel to scroll between various things here. You can see how the zooming in also works at the same time uh, that's because my mouse is eventually hovering over the gap here and or no not over that when it reaches the end it will trigger it so we'll turn off the zoom maybe um when we're in this sort of mode so we need to make these clickable so when we click on these cards that will do something so let's go through that process before we finish up this episode so on the card ui we're going to take our size box and our border we can take the border and wrap that with a button. Wrap with button. And then that button, we're going to take, sorry, the border, click on the border, and we're going to take the horizontal alignment and vertical alignment and make it stretch and fill the whole way. And we get rid of all padding. On the button, I'm going to hide the background color. Here, change the alpha of my background color here to zero. Okay, compile that and test this out. We should see we'll be able to click on our cards. You see a little movement when you click on. So I start. I may still want to make this um, smaller, maybe. So let's make that a little bit smaller. I feel. We go to my size box and just adjust that here. So width override. Turn it down to 200 and the height override here to uh, 280. So, and hit compile. You may find the text here needs to be adjusted too. So, I'm going to build, I'm going to change that down to uh, 12. Change this down to 14. And I'll leave those. At... And I'm actually going to change these resources here to have less padding. So, on the We'll take that down to on the left here to zero, right here to zero. There we go. And let's test that out. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I forgot to change the UI scroll box because you'll see it's all stretched now. Let's that. scroll box. Change the size and the wire here to 280. And we'll change the width here to. Um, Say, I have yours. So I had size box here, height override 280, width over 200. Okay. 
We want this to be about 500. Oh, and play that. It is our menu. Whilst we're here, let's just turn off the zoom thing. So if we've got this menu open, we can't zoom in and out. Okay, and we also want it to make it so that when we click off it and deselect it, we want this menu to disappear. So we're going to go into our base here, and we want to turn off the RTS controller's ability to zoom. Now zooming is happening at the moment on this mouse wheel. Uh, where is it is, and we're going to turn that off. So we make a little flag at the start here to enable and disable zoom. So we make a new boolean and we'll do is zoom enabled. Plug that in, get into a branch. And by default, that's going to set that to true. From that, we're going to go to our uh, menu base here, base menu, and more importantly, on our building base here. So when I've selected it and we've added it to viewport here, uh, I can get the RTS controller already here. So I'll take this reference, and we can then set is zoom enabled. Leave that as false. Then we'll go to RTS controller and we're going to go to clear unit selection. This happens when I click on empty space. When I clear the unit selection, I want to make is zoom enabled true. Hit play and zoom still. Go down here, select this. Now I can't zoom, but I can still scroll here. I click off here, I can now zoom. So we just need to get rid of this menu and we're done. So let's go back to our building base. So to clear that menu, we have to clear this reference here. Remove it from parent. But when we're clicking off, we're in the controller, therefore we don't have access to this uh, specific actor. But what we do have is when we do call the RTS controller to clear it, we're changing is selected on the unit base. The unit base is a function we made in our or base unit class. So as part of that, we can go to unit building base and get the is selected event. Event is selected. And we're going to add call to parent because we need to still do that. So add call to parent function and plug that in. And then we're going to take the is selected and we're going to do a branch on that. If that is false, I'm going to take my base menu reference and then do remove from parent and then clear my base menu reference by setting it to nothing file and save that push play now when i click on my building get this and if i click off of it i clear the menu hit f focus click off clear it these are all buttons, buttons ready to go. So in the next episode, we're going to start building our, our inventory for our building here. This is our base building. And uh, be able to build another building based on these cards here. Let's we'll start that process. So thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch that next part, plus many other of my videos, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan to watch them all early before everyone else. It just costs $1 a month. And you're just helping me out massively. Thank you so much to all my patrons for their continued support and your my YouTube members. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It really does matter and does help a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.